How's it going YouTube? Dylan here. In this video, we're going to talk about the best programming languages to learn in 2024. So, with AI going at full speed with a lot of layoffs, I think things will change quite a bit and that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video here today. So without further ado, let's go into the list. So, one of the languages you should learn is Python. Why Python? Well, one of the reasons why you should learn Python is, you know, artificial intelligence, data sets, that kind of thing, all use Python. Not only that, it's a very easy language to learn, but some of the downsides is because it's easy to learn, you'll have a lot of competition, right? So just know that, that you're probably going to get a lot of competition from seasoned people, you know, new people, that kind of thing. Now, the second language that I recommend that you learn are some lower level languages such as C++, C Sharp, or C. What's the reason for this? Well, these lower level languages are commonly used in hardware applications. So we're getting into kind of the embedded kind of realm of things. Now, this ain't the most sexy programming language to learn. You know, working with hardware isn't as sexy as working with, you know, hardcore software. But the reason why I'm recommending this in second place is because although AI has done a lot for, you know, automating marketing, automating software development, there's still certain intricacies when it comes to hardware that ChatGPT and other AI platforms can't get to quite yet because when it comes to hardware you have to take into account you know CPU, RAM, you know what if this is x86 ARM, what if this is you know x32 you know all these different hardware compatibilities make it very very difficult for artificial intelligence right now to kind of make accurate predictions at this point of time. So by going into a lower language, a lower level language like Python, or not Python, I mean C, C++, C Sharp, you know, it's gonna take some time, but at least you have some sort of job security. But some of the trade-offs is it's pretty difficult to learn, right? You have to understand pointers, you have to understand what goes on beyond the hardware. You know, yet if you're doing C, for example, you need to know memory allocation malloc, which isn't the easiest thing to actually learn. But there's a flip side to that, you know. There's not going to be as much competition as you are when it comes to something like Python, right? Now, another disadvantage to it is, you know, you're going to kind of, you're going to kind of be very niche and that might not be the best thing in the world, but it could be a good thing at the same time. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, not necessarily a good thing either. You know, it's kind of neutral, but you got to know what you're getting yourself into. Now, number three, I'm going to put JavaScript and any sort of, you know, React frameworks and Angular and that type of thing. You know, web development is great. You know, web development is used in a lot of applications. But as you go in time, I do believe that artificial intelligence will start to kind of, uh, make it i wouldn't say obsolete but there's going to be less of a demand for javascript and those front-end technologies as time goes on because if you think about it javascript is the most popular language in the world as with python but because of that the data sets for javascript are highly accurate you know i built lots of applications in my current job using ChatGPT in the MERN stack because, you know, it has such a good data set and it's good to go, right? So those are my top three languages. Let's talk a little bit about some shout outs and some other languages that you might be considering. Mobile. 
So mobile, I think, is a decent option. It's not as good as some of the low-level options, but it still allows some flexibility because of the hardware incompatibilities. I do believe that there's still going to be a market for that despite, uh, despite artificial intelligence and whatnot. But at the same time, you know, there's not as much demand as like Python and low-level languages and stuff like that. And, you know, it's kind of that in-between that you want to consider. Now, you have other things like data engineering concepts like SQL. That's really important to learn. GraphQL, that's really important to learn. But in my opinion, uh, it is very much with bigger companies. When it comes to Java, I would probably put that somewhat in the lower level level languages platform but at the same time you know java kotlin you know that kind of thing they're decent languages but it's only i would recommend it if you really have an interest in backend and that you would see through till getting to the point where you're competent enough to get a job because that's always the toughest part is to close out this video is even though i presented this list of uh, common languages if you really enjoy a certain language like golang and go then don't hesitate to do that because expertise is what most important so i hope that video was helpful i hope it provides some value if it did don't forget to hit like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video